Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. a great deal of talk about secret weapons these days. But in the last war, we had a secret weapon that was so secret that even the army didn't know about it. This weapon was the private and personal possession of a rifleman in the United States Army, and as far as he was concerned, there was nothing secret about it. It could be seen any time he opened his mouth. The title of today's story and the name of the weapon happens to be Madison's Teeth. But first, do you play a musical instrument? If you do, you may enlist as an army bandsman. That's right, you can choose a musical career in the army. Here's how it works. First, you ask your local army recruiter to arrange for an audition with an army band leader near your home. He'll give you a thorough audition and talk to you about your musical interests. If you qualify, then you enlist. First, you'll receive the basic training every good soldier must have. After basic, you'll go to the School of Music in Washington, D.C., and that's where you really start to learn. Studies there range from dance band fundamentals to advanced symphonic literature and theory. The teachers are among the world's finest. You'll work in a cultural atmosphere equal to that of many prominent conservatories. In addition to your army career training, there are opportunities for earning college credits in music and other subjects. And there are many other outstanding advantages. This is an unusual chance to get the kind of training you want while you serve your country. For a musical career in the Army, see your nearest United States Army recruiter. He'll give you all the details. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Madison's Teeth. Somebody once said that baseball is a game that depends on fractions. A fraction of a second is the difference between being safe or out, or uh, like a fraction of an inch is the difference between a, a ball or a strike. If the fractions are on your side, you win. And if they're not on your side, you lose. Simple as that. Well, the Germans don't know it, but they lost a pretty important battle in the last war on account of something that happened in a baseball game long before the war even started. Now, I'm not saying, mind you, I'm not saying that it, it, it changed the whole course of the war. I mean, it, it, it would have ended the same way anyhow. But at the time, it could have been pretty serious. See, I'm, a, I'm the kind of guy who likes to look things up, and my hobby is reading. So when the war was over, I read up on all the battles, especially the ones that I was in. And I, was, I was particularly interested in a fight that took place near a town in Alsace-Lorraine called Hagenau, because everybody said here was where we broke up the last big German counterattack of the war. Well, one night I was pursuing this hobby of mine, reading, and I was reading the memoirs of a certain German general named von Borkenhorst. All of a sudden, I sat up and began to take notice because he was talking about this particular battle that I was involved in around Hagenau. And this von Falkenhorst was considered one of the top brains in the general staff. And as I read, I could sort of visualize the staff meeting that he was in charge of about this battle in this town called Hagenau. I, I could imagine what General von Falkenhorst was saying to his officers. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that these were his exact words, but... I'll bet this was pretty much the gist of it. Gentlemen, the major thrust will be directed in the north against the Americans' first and third armies. Intelligence is positive that the Americans will not mount an offensive in the winter, nor do they expect a winter offensive on our part. We know that they have pulled back several divisions to rest in winter quarters. 
So we will surprise them. Now we shall attack in the area of Bastogne. Consult your maps labeled 3A. Now to meet our attack, they will be forced to move up men and equipment from the 7th Army in the south. We will then mount another attack in the south, in the vicinity of Hagenau. We shall be able to command the main road leading to Nancy and be in a position to retake all of central France. We have considered every contingency. The plan has every chance of success. Well, there's no doubt about it. It was a pretty good plan, and uh, the general did have every angle figured out. But one thing the general didn't have figured out, he had no way of knowing about a baseball game that had been played five years before in 1939, a semi-pro game that took place near Beresford, Ohio. But then the general probably never heard of Beresford, Ohio. And for all I know, he never even heard of baseball. One thing for sure, he sure never heard of a shortstop named Jack Madison. Jack Madison was 19 that year, and he played a lot of semi-pro ball. On this particular day, his team, the Beresford Tigers, faced a crisis. What's the matter, Skipper? It's Jackson. He can't play today. He's in bed with the flu. Well, what are we going to do for a catcher? Yeah, what are we going to do for a catcher? Well, can we get Ryan? I try to call him. His wife says he's been out driving a semi-trailer all week. He's somewhere in Indiana. Oh. Hey, look, Skip. I'll get behind the bat. Yo, you ever catch before? Well, no, but who else can you use? Eddie. He caught in high school. Yeah, and who can you put in left field? The Cubs got six right-handed pull hitters. If I get behind the bat, Davis can play good enough short for if you. If you get behind the bat, you can get killed. Well, what's that of catching? Besides, this way you, you won't weaken your defense. Okay, Jack. But be careful, will you? How am I doing, Skipper? See me throw that guy out trying to steal second? Yeah, yeah. Now, like I said, there's nothing to being a catcher. I'm even holding lefty's knuckleball. I keep telling you and telling you, and you don't listen. You keep moving up too close behind the batter. Now, watch it, will you? Yeah, yeah, I, I keep forgetting. Well, one of these times, the batter's going to hit you on his back swing. He'll knock your brains out. Now, watch it for crying out loud. Well, along about the sixth inning, it happened. Jack forgot, and he was playing too close to the batter. The batter swung hard, missed the pitch, and his bat came around and struck Jack full on the face. His mask didn't help a bit. The bat struck one of the protecting bars with such force that it actually bent. Jack was knocked out cold. Two of his teeth came out, and every tooth in his lower jaw jarred loose. After a while, Jack went to see his dentist. The news was not too hot. I'm sorry, Jack. Well, only two teeth are gone, Doc. I know, Jack. Those are your incisors. I could give you two false teeth to replace them if... Uh, if what? If, uh, well, if I could anchor them. What have you got in your mouth to support them? Your whole lower right side is loose, your canines, your bicuspids, your molars. I could almost pull any of these teeth out with my fingers. Jack, you're going to have to lose all your lower teeth. All my lower teeth? Doc, what am I going to do? Jack, you'll have to be fitted for a complete lower plate. False teeth? Holy smoke, Doc. I'm only 19. Well, we might as well get with it, Jack. Believe me, it'll hurt me more than it'll hurt you. Yeah. Well, as a result of an accident while catching in a baseball game, Jack Madison wound up with a full lower dental plate. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what does all of this have to do with one of the most important battles of the war? Well, the answer is everything. See, that was 1939. Now skip five years and come along to 1944. Jack is now Private Jack Madison, a rifleman in my squad. And the reason I, I know the story about the teeth is because he told it to me. See, Jack is a pretty good guy, but on one particular subject, you could say he's quite a nut, and that subject is teeth. Every night, no matter where we are, Jack fills his canteen cup with water and some kind of cleaning solution he keeps in a little bottle, and he lets his lower plate stand in it. Oh, Jack is proud of that lower plate. The most precious thing he has. And he can never stop talking about it either. Now, what do you eat that I can't eat? Steak, celery, nuts, apples? I'll chew anything as good as you will. Yeah, but those are artificial teeth, Jack. 
You can't beat the teeth nature gave you. Now, what's so hard about nature? Look at the history of the whole human race. What has it been? Just the story of man improving on nature? Yeah, but what's it? All the good things in life are artificial. Nature gives man hair to keep him warm, right? That yeah. ain't enough, so man invents clothes. Nature gives you feet. How far can man walk, so man invents a gasoline engine? Nature gives you teeth. What happens to your natural teeth? You get cavities, you get abscesses, you get toothaches. Well, not me, buddy. The only teeth in my head that give me trouble are my upper teeth, my natural teeth. Hey, here comes Chad with me. Looks like something's up. All right, you guys, we're pulling back. What's the matter, Chadwick? I don't know, but it looks bad. They say the Jerrys are advancing in the north against the First Army. It must be serious. Took away all our spare ammo, and they're sending it up there. Hey, and I thought the war was just about over. Now, you let those Jerrys break through up north, and we'll have us a brand new war on our hands. Everybody here, let's go! Oh, wait a minute. Let me put my teeth back in. We not only sent ammo and equipment up north, but we also sent men. Ten men from each company. You multiply that out over a couple of divisions, and it comes to quite a lot of men. Start getting gaps in your line. You start stretching out thinner. Start getting bigger distances between foxholes. But things were getting rough up north. You probably read about it at the time. It was what they called the Battle of the Bulge. It's part one of the, the German plan. Smack us hard in the north, force us to weaken the south, and then hit us there, too. That would be the second part. And it wasn't long in coming. We fell back to the town of Hagenau. And we, we didn't mind it at all. It was freezing cold and the snow was falling. But my squad took shelter in a house. Nice, comfortable, deserted house with a kitchen and a big room with a fireplace in it. I tell you, with a roaring blaze going that fireplace, it was hard to tell there was a war on. We were in reserve and the front line was about a half a mile up ahead. About 10 o'clock at night when the call came for all unit leaders to report to the company command post. I've just got word from regiment. We'll have to pull back about three miles. The Germans are due to attack us in division strength. We haven't a chance of holding the town. Our third battalion has done some pretty good positions behind us. That's where we'll have to make our stand. Now, the 100th Division is headed here from Nancy, and so are elements of the 36th. But those troops are on the road. We'll have to hold the Jerry's until they can get here and dig in. But any questions? Uh, sir, is there just our battalion here now? We don't even have the full battalion. We have our company. We have one machine gun platoon from H Company and part of Headquarters Company. That's it. And we have to hold whatever the Jerry's throw at us. Little Boy Blue calling Mother Goose. Mother Goose, come in, Little Boy Blue. Jerry's about ready to roll. Barrage starting. Alternate plan now in operation. Roger. See you at the races. All right, let's be out of here in no more than 15 minutes. Platoon leaders, get your men on the move and back to the defensive positions. All right, move. All right, guys, on your feet. Hey, well, what's the matter? What's up? Huh? Strategic withdrawal. Oh, not again. Old Jerry Division is coming to call, and we haven't got enough refreshments to serve them here. we got defensive positions about three miles back. Come on, everybody out. Let's go. Sergeant Chadwick, where's your squad? Coming, sir. All right, guys, come on. Everybody out, every... Hey, Jack, I'm talking to you, too. Yeah, in a minute, Chadwick, in a minute. What are you waiting for? My teeth. Where are my teeth? Well, where did you put them? I took them out and put them in my canteen cup. Where'd I put the cup? How should I know, Jack? We can't hang around here all night waiting for you to find your teeth. Now, come on. Where's that fourth squad? Jack, never mind your teeth. Let's go. Chadwick, are you suggesting I leave my teeth here? Sergeant Chadwick, get the squad out of here. Yes, sir, let's go, My Jack. teeth, I'm not leaving here without my teeth. Madison, outside on the double. But, sir, I can't find my That's teeth. That's an order. I'm sorry, Madison, but... Yes, sir. If you hang around here another couple of minutes, you stand to lose much more than just your teeth. All right, lead your squad out, Sergeant Chadwick. All right, guys, here we go. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Madison's Teeth. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. I have an important message that concerns all the young men of America. If you know radios, telephones, motors, or if you're experienced in any other technical skills, you're needed in the United States Army. Your expert knowledge and know-how is just as essential to the Army as the man with the gun. You'll be an important member of the team. For the high school graduate thinking about a future career, this is a must. You can begin immediately training for a highly skilled position. You make application at your nearest United States Army recruiting station at which time you state your preference of a training course. There are more than 150 courses from which to choose. Now, this application does not place you under any obligation to enlist. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you'll receive a letter of acceptance that is your guarantee 
of a reserved seat in the course of your choice. Then you can enlist and begin your career as a skilled specialist in the United States Army. So if you expect to serve a tour of duty in the near future, make sure you make the most of your opportunities. Visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Madison's Teeth. Hey, Frank, Pete, everything okay in here? Yeah. Any signs of cherries? No, not yet. Okay, keep your eyes open. Perkins, Jack, you guys all right? Yeah, sure. Look, Jack, Jack, boy, I'm sorry about the teeth. The first chance you can, go back to the medics and get fitted for a new plate, huh? Well, it won't be the same. I'll never get a fit like that oh, again. Oh, sure you will. Yeah. Meanwhile, how am I going to eat? Did you ever try to eat without your lower teeth? Jack, look, Jack, I said I was sorry. Yeah, but what was the big rush? Couldn't you let me have just another minute to look for them? The juries aren't here yet. It might be ours. Well, I hope it is. By that time, we'll have reinforcements. Yeah. And meanwhile, some Jerry's going to find my teeth. Now look, i got to check out Roberts and Gordon. Keep your eyes open, huh? Hey, Chadwick. What's the matter? Chadwick? How stupid can a guy get? I know where I left the teeth. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I left them in the kitchen back in the house. Now I remember. I put them in my canteen cup, and I left the cup in the kitchen sink. Chadwick? Listen. Nothing doing. Oh, Chadwick, there's no sign of any Jerry's Nothing yet. Nothing doing. Maybe they didn't even start to advance. If they haven't gone into the town yet, why can't I, I just go back there? Because and you've got your orders, teeth or no teeth. You're staying right where you are. Well, you can imagine that I had other things on my mind besides Jack's teeth. I'd inspect my foxholes. I had to learn the new positions, the locations of our supporting machine guns. I had to make sure of our spare ammo and the 101 little things that you want to know about. I was on my way back to the squad when I ran into the captain. He was out inspecting the company positions at first hand. I didn't have a chance to say more than two words to him, and all of a sudden, Perkins, Jack's buddy, came running up to us. Hey, Sarge. Sarge. It's, it's, it's Jack Madison. What about Jack? He, he's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Where? Uh, he, he went back after his teeth. His teeth? Yes, sir, his teeth. When? Oh, just now, sir. Could have been more than two or three minutes ago. He, he says, Park, I'm going to get my teeth. I'll be back here right away. Look, I, I tried to stop him, sir, but he wouldn't listen. Sir, we can't let him go marching back in Hagenau. He'll run into the whole German army. That man ought to be court-martialed. Although he isn't running away from the enemy, he's running toward the enemy. Sir, if he just left, I can catch up with him before he gets too far. If I give him a direct order, he'll listen to me. Have I the captain's permission to go get him? All right, take off right now. You better take two or three men with you. Yes, sir. Well, the four of us set out on the double after Jack Madison. I knew that the captain had a good reason for giving me permission. After all, we'd lost contact with the enemy, and this way, at least we were a reconnaissance patrol to find out what was doing up ahead. Well, there was no sign of Jack. He must have been traveling pretty fast. But we knew where he was going, so we kept a sharp lookout. And any minute, we stood a chance of running into advance units of the Germans. And if we did, we'd have to abandon Jack and his teeth to their fate and hot-foot it back. But there were no Germans in sight. Soon, we were in the town of Hagenau. We made for the house where we had stayed, and we went inside. Sure enough, there was my boy. Well, if it isn't the toothless wonder. I found him, all right. Yeah. Exactly where I left him, in the kitchen sink. Hey, what got into you, anyhow? What? I mean, what? I, do, oh, do you, do you, Chadwick, do you realize what you did? Chadwick, how could I get along without my teeth? How could you? We'll talk about that later. Come on, let's get back. Hey, wait a minute. Chadwick. What's the matter? Take a look out that window. There, up the road. Jerry's. Yeah. And that looks like an advance patrol. All right, all right, fellas. Now, keep out of sight. They're moving down both sides of the street. Um, is there a back door? No, Chadwick. Only way out is through the front. Hey, I count 20 men in that patrol. Yeah, and there must be plenty more coming on in back of them, too. Hey, what are they stopping for? Well, can't you see? They're scared of an ambush. They're going to search every house on their way down the street. Well, what'll we do when they turn in here? You and your teeth. Hey, hey, hey. They're moving up again, Chadwick. Now, they're, they're stopping at the next house. All right, everybody. Everybody take a window. Hey, can we hold them, Chadwick? Look, there's five of us. We got one BAR and four M1s. 
Jack, have you got your grenade launcher? Yeah. Your rifle grenades? Yeah, I got enough. Okay, mount one. Now look, now listen close. See where there's a group of them waiting by the house up the street? Yeah. yeah. Well, you put one right in there. The rest of you guys, as soon as that grenade goes, open up rapid fire. It'll take the Jerry's a little time before they find out what they're up against. That's what our outfit is supposed to be fighting for, time. So we might as well buy a little right here. Got that rifle grenade ready, Jack? Yeah, she's raring to go. Rest of you guys set to open up? Okay. All right. Now, Jack, now start to squeeze her off. Now what? Now it's their move. Now let them try to figure out what they're up against. <laughs> they don't know what strength we are. All they know is they ran into resistance. Whoever's in charge of that advance patrol is already sending back word. He's running a heavy fire and needs reinforcements. For all he knows, we could be the main line of resistance. Well, one thing is sure, they don't figure we're only five guys standing in the way. So far, so good. Yeah, so far. Every minute counts. Every minute brings those relief divisions from Nancy that much closer. Man, it's quiet. It's too quiet. Don't worry. It won't last. Hey, what are they doing? What do you think they're doing? They're laying down some artillery before they try us again. Now keep away from the windows. Just pray that nothing drops in here. lasted a good 10 minutes. The longest 10 minutes I ever spent in my life. The house rattled and shook, but nothing landed directly on us. It was a general barrage meant to soften up the town. Jerry's must have thought there were American troops all over the place. And then it was quiet. Well, we knew what that meant. We could expect the general to saw not just an advance patrol, but an attack in force. Here they come. Ready with those rifle grenades, Jack? Yeah. Okay, guys, now. Keep it up. Hey, Chadwick, look. Look, they're pulling back. They're taking cover. Order fire. Chadwick, I don't figure it. Those guys could roll right over us. Only one answer. They must think we are the main line of resistance. Well, it's crazy. How could they make a mistake like that? Ah, don't ask me, but I guess they're proceeding according to a plan, and they think the plan has gone off. They don't expect resistance here, and they're getting it. What they're doing is sending combat patrols out to probe for a weak spot in our line, and then they'll hit it. Well, if they want to find a weak spot, all they have to do is send a patrol down another street. Yeah, that's all they got to do, and this ball game is over. Meanwhile, we're still buying time. Chadwick, listen, firing. Must be a couple of streets away to our left. Hey, hey, hey! That machine gun! That's one of ours! Chadwick, who have we got in this town? It's me. Uh, unless... Unless the captain sent out a combat patrol to find out what happened to us. Sure. Now the juries must really figure we're all over the town. Good. <laughs> and while they're figuring, time is passing. Oh, boy, that's all we want to happen. And it is happening. Uh-oh. They're starting that again. Take a look up the street. Any juries? Ah, it looks clear. How long can we be lucky? I mean, they're bound to get a hit on this house, and if they do, there'll be nothing left of us except for Jack's teeth. Look, this could be our chance to get out of here. Let's run for it. Everybody set. Jack, you got your team. Oh, quit your kidding, huh? Let's go! We got out of there in a hurry. The Germans were plastering the town with artillery fire. And by the time they were through, there wasn't a house left standing. But by that time, we were back with our outfit. Also, by that time, we noticed some new faces, the new foxholes. They were troops of the 100th Division and the 36th, advance units who had just arrived from Nancy. Most important, by that time, the snowstorm that had dogged us all week had ended, and the skies were clearing, which meant that we could get air support. The Germans never did get past Hagenau, and the next day we began the advance that wasn't halted until the war was over. But when you're involved in actual fighting, you have no way of knowing what's going on. You can account for the couple hundred yards in your own neighborhood, but that's all. 
It was only years later that I really, really understood what had happened. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a great reader. And I was reading the memoirs of this German general, von Falkenhorst. And according to him... For a reason I will never fully understand, our entire plan miscarried at the town of Hagenau. We met unexpected resistance of indeterminate strength. I will never know whether or not the colonel of the forward regiment displayed too much caution or why he allowed himself to be held up a precious half day in order to probe the American line. He is dead and cannot answer. Now, at the end of my career, I can only say that 40 years of military experience and service in two wars has taught me this very simple fact. War is filled with a million tiny imponderables. Sure is, General. And one little one out of that million is Jack Madison's teeth. Today's United States Army is composed of skilled technicians and specialists who have learned their jobs in the world's finest technical schools. And now the Army is offering you a great opportunity to join this elite group of men and serve your country and yourself at the same time. Your Army now has in operation a great technical training program that permits you to choose your own career from more than 150 courses, ranging from atomic energy to welding. What's more, you get that choice of training guaranteed before you enlist. It's called the Reserved for You training program, and it works this way. If you're a high school graduate of service age, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and make application for the Reserved for You training program, stating your preference of a technical course. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you're awarded a letter that guarantees you a reserved seat in the technical training course of your choice. Now, all this takes place before you enlist, and it places you under no obligation whatsoever. Then, after you enlist and complete your basic training, you're enrolled in your school and begin your career as a highly skilled Army technician. Find out about choice, not chance, right away. Visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>